If you're a longtime fan of Battlefield games, you'll be familiar with the bugs and glitches that the franchise has hosted for, well, pretty much as long as I can remember. My first Battlefield title was Bad Company 1, and I can't remember a single Battlefield game since that point that hasn't been subject to some strange bug or glitch that has gotten the community talking. Battlefield 3 and its infamous M26 Dark glitch, and Battlefield 4's horrendous netcode issues spring instantly to mind. If you take the recent January patch for Battlefield 5 as a more recent example, it set about trying to fix a lot of small, annoying bugs that have been present in the game since its launch, but in the process, the patch broke other things. As some things are ticked off the list for this game, more things seem to be added to the bottom of it. This is happening more and more often with DICE and Battlefield titles, and I want to ask, and potentially answer the question, why does this keep happening? Firstly, I think we do need to consider the wider gaming landscape of 2019. What's the overall industry doing here, and how, in some cases, that might be adversely affecting video games? We've moved beyond the days of video games being shipped in their box and receiving no updates once they go on sale. We live in a constantly connected world, and with that comes the ability for game developers to iterate on their existing games in a way that they couldn't do in the past. Teams now have platforms to host their games on, and the ability to patch those games seemingly with no limit. Looking at 2018 and 2019 specifically, the rise of games as a service has definitely taken a grip on the industry. Video game developers and publishers are now adopting more frequent update schedules, and patches for games are rolling out much faster than perhaps they did just a few short years ago. Epic Games and Fortnite kind of led this charge in late 2017, early 2018, pumping out weekly updates to their Battle Royale game mode, adapting the base map, adding new weapons, implementing limited time modes on top of Battle Royale, daily cosmetic rotations, and even more besides. The game just stormed ahead of all others at the time, and now still appears to be setting the standard that other video game publishers and developers are desperately trying to compete with in order to remain relevant. This accelerated update cycle, it puts pressure on development teams to turn around updates, fixes and new content faster than ever, and deliver them to their game's audience, who are waiting for the next big thing to do. With that added pressure comes the potential for issues to, well, just slip through the net as it were. Battlefield 5 was advertised as a game to use this live service approach, ridding itself of the premium season pass that had been present in the franchise since Battlefield 3. A lot of players were excited about this news, not having to cough up extra cash to get access to the content, and instead being given that content without question. That was something that players have been asking for since the introduction of Premium, ironically. It wasn't exactly a well-received system back in 2012, when EA chose to introduce the Season Pass into a franchise that previously its developer had said would never charge for DLC. The removal of Premium also led the way for a far more frequent update system, where DICE would be freer to create the content they wanted as they move forward with the game, rather than being forced to stick to this predetermined plan that had been sold to consumers. It also meant that DICE could make changes to the base game much quicker, and adapt some of the mechanics on a much more frequent basis if it was needed. That would keep active players active, and potentially entice new players to join in and come along for the ride. So far, that hasn't really panned out. Battlefield 5's first major update in December was actually delayed by a day because at the 11th hour an issue was spotted and the team had to frantically resubmit the patch for certification. The January patch that dropped just a couple of days ago, whilst not delayed, made unintentional changes to the Frontlines game mode, reducing the player count from 32 to 16, and added a weird UI delay to the new kill cam experience, elongating the time that you had to stare at your killer. And thirdly, that broke the revive timers because the kill cam wasn't working properly. None of these issues were intended, of course, and I'm confident that DICE wouldn't have shipped the patch if they'd known they were present. But the same question then comes up. 
Why does this keep happening? Why do seemingly obvious issues keep making their way into the game despite all of the testing, all the checking and all the quality assurance that goes on behind the scenes before the patch is deployed? What's happening in the process for this to become such a regular occurrence? Well, digging into this issue a little bit more, I found some rather interesting tweets from Jakub Ajmal. He is a producer at DICE. On the subject, he was talking about one of the issues currently affecting Battlefield 5, company coin accrual. It's really annoying, and it means the progression system doesn't work properly. This tweet here states that while the team totally understands that the bug causes frustration, I don't really think it's in any doubt that DICE understands that it causes frustration. Well, digging into this situation a little bit more, I found some interesting tweets here from Jakub Ajmal. He's a producer at DICE on this subject where he's talking about one of the issues currently affecting Battlefield 5. He's referencing company coin accrual. This tweet here states that while the team totally understands that the bug causes frustration, I don't think that was in any doubt. I think DICE are fully aware that this does cause frustration for the player. Part of the reason it's taken time to make progress on fixing the problem is down to the fact that they cannot reproduce the bug in their test environment. So this highlights one part of the process that I previously didn't know about. DICE has an internal build of Battlefield 5 that's used for testing, slightly different to the one that's out for the public to play, but they are very, very similar. This means, as Jakob points out, that sometimes issues that end up in the public builds are not present in the internal builds, and issues are missed. Even more frustrating is when you're testing for an issue that is present in the public build, but you cannot get it to trigger in the internal build. You know there's a bug, but you can't fix it. Moving further on, a day after the partial fix to the company coin issue was deployed, a backend update was applied, Jakob tweeted again, this time updating the community that they were in the process of comparing fixed accounts to still broken ones, and they were looking for a discrepancy that then could be rectified. Once they'd done that, they'd be able to create a new test build, so another one, send it to their live QA team in Galway Island, play multiple matches across multiple profiles, and compare all the results again. This adds more logistics to the chain, more people, more setups, more variables. Going back to Jakob's previous points about the internal builds not being able to trigger the bug, there was no guarantee that the bug would actually show up anyway. So all of this work goes in without any way of knowing if it would show the results they actually needed. This elongates the process towards fixing the issue, all the while the game is on a tight schedule to be updated publicly. So perhaps you can start to see why some issues simply weren't noticed whilst others get fixed, and perhaps why new bugs appear when implementing fixes to others. Everything is linked together, and there's only a very short amount of time that the team have to try and fix something. Battlefield doesn't stand alone, however, when it comes to bugs and issues plaguing the experience. Rainbow Six Siege is a perfect example of another game that, with almost every update, comes fixes and new content, but sometimes new bugs appear. Bugs got so bad during the second year of support for the game that the development team cancelled an entire season of DLC content and replaced it with something they called Operation Health an entire season where the team would instead focus purely on trying to fix the various issues that the game had at the time. After that period, the development team went on to release the operators that had been scheduled, but they didn't release a brand new map that had been scheduled. Battlefield 5 isn't quite at that stage, content being cancelled because of bugs and issues in the game, but we've certainly seen content pushed back past its launch date. The co-op mode that used to be part of the marketing campaign before the launch got pushed to a post-launch update. Soldier dragging again being mentioned before the launch, but then not making it into the launch build of the game. However, Rainbow Six does do one thing differently to Battlefield 5, and that's using a community test environment. Something that Battlefield 4 and Battlefield 1 basically championed. Ubisoft will build an update for Rainbow Six and release it two weeks early on the test environment, basically allowing players to test the content and report issues that they find. They do have to rely on the goodwill of the community, however, because it is a separate client to the main game. 
Again, however, this doesn't catch everything. Bugs still make it into the public build of the game and cause frustration, breaking something before the patch that wasn't broken. Recently, the Pro Series had to be delayed because there was a bug in the game that would have affected the gameplay experience, and of course, a competition can't go ahead with a game-breaking bug like that. Battlefield 5 is in the spotlight at the moment, and its problems are being highlighted, but it seems no development team is really immune to this issue. That said, there are plenty of games that do release without major issues plaguing the gameplay experience, so the evidence is there to show that situations like Battlefield 5, like Rainbow Six Siege, don't have to exist. Should this seemingly endless scenario of patches breaking things and then needing a patch to fix the patch that the patch broke that the patch fixed, it just goes on and on, should this scenario be as bad as it is? Is there anything that EA and DICE can do here for the situation around Battlefield 5? I believe there is. Looking from the outside in, and this is my own opinion here, DICE look like they're being rushed around and having to finish things in far too short a time frame. There are two ways that you can fix this. One, you increase the amount of time between updates, potentially increasing the amount of time available for testing, to find issues, or for issues to be properly fixed for one patch update. Or, you pour more resources into the equation and increase the manpower that's available. The reason I don't think DICE and EA can afford to extend the amount of time between updates for the game directly links into the anger that certain players are already expressing. Increasing the amount of time it takes for fixes to arrive would likely lead to people not playing, not returning to the game, and leaving the game with a weaker community than what it has right now. The game was pitched as a live service product, and increasing the time between updates would move it away from what I would consider a live service. Now the other way to fix it is this. EA is a massive company, arguably the biggest games publisher in the world, and they have the resources that go above and beyond what most development teams can only dream of. The amount of revenue they make is just astronomical, it's into the billions of dollars. And so using some of that vast resource to support DICE in fixing Battlefield 5, bringing it up to the level a gamer expects when they spend $60, shouldn't really be an issue. Gamers are paying for a AAA experience, and with that comes the expectation that the AAA experience should be delivered from the moment the game releases. I stand by the people who are frustrated and annoyed that the product they bought into isn't working as intended, and I stand with them when they call for things to be fixed properly. And just one final thought that I want to end the video on here. Are video gamers, the people that play the games once they come out and are released on all their platforms, are the gamers part of this problem? I'd say that we are. We live in an age where entertainment is on demand. It's there at a touch of a button, and we've been conditioned to expect that service pretty much anywhere we choose to go for our entertainment. Fortnite has conditioned a huge portion of the gaming world to expect updates to arrive just at the drop of a hat fixing bugs, introducing new features, and adding new content on an unprecedented scale. And us gamers are now expecting that of other development studios as well. DICE and EA are transitioning their entire development system away from these big static releases with massive updates once in a while to constant smaller updates that deliver the content that players still want to play with. Perhaps the studio wasn't quite prepared as well as it could have been for that switchover, as evidenced by the issues that face the game today. But gamers still demanding that content quicker and quicker, faster than faster than ever, is definitely playing a part in this entire issue. It's a really thought-provoking topic, this one. I'm interested to hear what your thoughts and opinions are on the problems that Battlefield 5 is facing down below in the comments section. And if you've got any comments about the wider gaming world as well, other games that might be having problems too, leave those down in the comments and let's start having a conversation about how games have issues and how they need to be fixed and how the industry seems to be moving at such a rate that they can't be fixed fast enough. Thanks very much for watching today and until next time, my name is Westy, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.